Okay, I guess, oh, this is really loud. Um, I guess we can get started. Thank you all for joining me for, I guess, the first full talk of GDC. Um, we have a long week ahead of us, but I'm glad you guys are here with me instead. Um, so this is a live 2D animation demo. Uh, I think it's kind of self-explanatory. I'm just gonna sit here and animate for you guys. The point of this is less about the tools, um, because my tools actually aren't really ideal for animating, and I'll go over that really quick. Um, but it's more about the thought process behind what I'm doing and how I apply 2D animation to games. Um, I'm the lead animator on the indie fighting game Skullgirls, which was released in 2012. And I think what makes it special is that the whole game is entirely hand animated frame by frame by myself, um, our in-house team of uh, five artists, and we have a huge, awesome army of contract animators that also help us out. So today I'm gonna show you what we do in-house. I'm gonna animate a punch that then can go back into the idle or then can combo into a kick before returning into the idle. But I'm gonna skip the part where I key it because it's, I think keys are kind of the easier part. Um, you know, it's, it's fun to kind of like draw cool poses and, you know, figure that out. But I think what makes it hard and what makes it uh, relevant to game animation is knowing how to do those in-betweens and work within the restrictions that your game designer is gonna impose on you. Um, so uh, before we start animating, I just wanna go over a few quick technical details about Skullgirls. Skullgirls runs at 60 FPS, but it's kind of ridiculous to animate at 60 FPS. So our closest approximation is to animate at 30, which turns into holding every drawing for about four frames. Um, it's kind of like animating at twos at 30, but we also change how long each frame is held depending on what we need, like a smear frame might be held for less or a key might be held for longer. Uh, today, let's say, and you totally didn't, but let's say my animator, or sorry, my designer asked me to animate um, a medium punch and then a hard kick. For us, a medium hits around frame 10 at 60 FPS, and the hard hits around frame 16 at 60. So in Skullgirls, what that turns into for us is that the medium move is going to have something like three drawings of startup, one drawing of the active, like attacking keyframe, and then three drawings returning back to the idle. And then the hard is gonna have uh, five drawings start up, one drawing uh, active, and then five returning to idle. These are more just kind of rules of thumb, so we refer to our designer Mike for the specifics of what he wants for each move, but this is kind of how we get started. So I'm going to take a seat. Can you guys still hear me? Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, so. Again, I think you guys can use whatever tool works best. Um, I'm gonna talk about what I use really quick, which is Photoshop. I animate entirely in Photoshop. I have, I can actually get rid of this here. I set my F keys to switch frames back and forth, spacebar plays, um, and it's really, it's not great for animating, honestly. Um, but the reason we use it is because I'm used to it. Um, that's the main thing. Um, Skullgirls uses raster images. We export everything as PNGs, and we also have a few like photo, Photoshop scripts that help us get things into the game. Um, and also a big thing is that Photoshop is the most accessible program to all of our contract animators, which is a big deal. Um, so just, you know, say, saying, you know, give us your files back in PSDs is the easiest thing. Um, so, you know, whatever gets the job done. Maybe we'll switch someday, but this is what we use for now. So I guess I can get started. This character is... A little girl I just 
designed for this talk. Um, she's probably never going to be anywhere again. But I have come here with my keys already done. So you can see I have this first move where she kind of does this like force palm thing before going back to the idol. And then she can do it before kicking and then returning back to idle. And she kind of, she's swinging her leg around the back there. So, I guess I can just start trying. So one thing I try to do first is um, on, on impacts, actually pretty much any move, I try to have a smear. So here, right before she hits, I want it to overshoot and then smear it before hitting that final key. And these are gonna be really scribbly because I wanna get through as much of it as I can. So it's not gonna look great, but I'll try my best. So just for a split second, she'll kind of like overshoot before going into that final key. And I find what this helps do is really give you the impression of kind of like that snap before, before going into the final key. Uh, let's see. So even just that, it's really close to the key, but it just very slightly overshoots. You can kind of see that it gives it a little bit more of that impression of impact. And I can add it here as well. So already, we have two of the three drawings of startup before getting, going into the key here. So we can just add one more in between. Maybe, let's see. She can kind of start to shift her body forward. Actually, I have her hand smearing just a little bit as she comes out because it has to go fast. Um, so she can kind of shift her upper body forward a little bit. And one thing I like to do is to think about when you're moving your body, what part is moving first? Where are you moving your weight first? So um, in this punch, I'm thinking she kind of throws her chest forward, but her hand is actually still towards the back. And that's another thing that can help kind of give that contrast and give that snap into the move. Add it here. So let's see how this looks. Yeah, so, oops. So it goes fast. My computer doesn't play it very fast, which is actually kind of one of the things that's a pain about Photoshop. Um, but I think you can see just from that, you can kind of get a sense of just this quick snap and impact. And it's only three frames. So really quick, we can just have her go back to the idle. One thing that I find super helpful for 2D animation that maybe you've noticed is that I keep my idle frame on the whole time. And that kind of helps me keep my proportions in check because when you're 2D animating, it's very easy for things to change in size or go off model. So having my idle frame on all the time, like you don't really notice it, but 
that is a huge help for me in, in trying to keep stuff the right shape and the right size. So let's kind of quickly get her back to idle. I really try to emphasize my keyframes as much as possible because when you're moving as fast as you need to for games, I think you want to make sure everything reads as, as clear as possible. So here, she's kind of favoring her key. So I basically have three frames that are really close to that key. And I think that helps it read a lot more. I try not to make the return to idols too complex. I've seen some some animations where they kind of try to bit, put a bit of like flourish into the return to idol, but I think the main point of it is just to to you know get back to your starting point. But also one thing that might be the case in your game that's the case in Skullgirls is that you can cancel out of a lot of the moves. So after hitting this key, if you press something else, you're going to do a different move. So if you try to do some crazy animation on the return to idle, then it's going to look kind of funny. Kind of have her leaning back. Her, her front foot there is still kind of in the same place. I'm just going to have a blobby smear here for her hand to go back. I'm not worrying too much about her back arm here because it's actually going to all be hidden by her little cape thing, but I'm still trying to keep it in mind. And here. She's sliding that book back foot. Um. Oops. Okay, so we can kind of check out how that looks. Zooming out makes it play faster on my computer. Yeah, so it's rough, you know, it's very quick, but I think you can kind of get the impression of where it's going. So now we can just start on that second move. So from here, if you keep pressing, I mean, I made this up, so I don't know. But say you keep pressing, um, and she can do a different move from here. I have her shifting her hips forward as she's gonna do this kick around the back. So one thing, again, I'm gonna try to do is to delay um, the limb that she's gonna actually end up attacking with for as much as possible. So again, still, 
still closer to the key. So she just moves her butt forward, basically. From here, I'm gonna have her twist her upper body way more than she's twisting her lower, because she's leading with her upper body before her lower half kind of catches up. And still having this leg delayed as much as possible. Even though I think technically her body's kind of breaking here. When you play the full thing, you don't, you don't really see it, but you feel it. And I think if you watch a lot of um, game animations step by step, Dead or Alive is actually something that does this a ton. If you go frame by frame through um, any, actually, since the first one of the Dead or Alive games, they break the bodies like crazy and it looks insane. But they do a great job at that. So here, I think her torso is going to almost be where it ends up, but her lower body I'm going to have her foot kind of back here and smear all the way down so you really get that clear arc. Yeah, so from here, you can kind of get that sense of weight as she's throwing her leg up super high before hitting that final key. And I think even though they're just scribbles, you can still get the sense of what's happening. So I want to add one more frame before, hit, before hitting my key. And again, I'm going to have this one pretty much almost be a traceover of my final key. I'm kind of end the smear here. And this time I'm not doing an overshoot because she's kind of swinging around. So the motion will continue afterwards. But I'm still trying to keep it pretty close to my key. Also, if you rotate in Photoshop, using the little anchor point is very useful. I 
Okay, so let's see how that looks. Again, zooming out, it's kind of annoying. <laughs> but yeah, super rough, but you can kind of get the sense of what's happening. And I think it does an okay job of conveying that kind of weight, despite you know having such a strict limitation put on it. Some of my arcs are kind of broken, but it's okay this time. So again, let's just try to get her back to the idol. When I tried animating this before, I kind of had her shift her weight forward before returning back to the idol, and it kind of made the whole motion muddy. So I feel like physically, if she's throwing her leg back, I would want her to move her torso forward, but it honestly just didn't really look good. So I ended up just trying to have her keep her upper torso pretty much in the same place. For as much as possible. Before returning back. So she's kind of falling back into the idol here because she has all the weight of her leg swinging around her kind of catching up to her. And one last frame.
Let's see if that works okay. So I'd want to kind of work it over a little bit more because it's so scribbly. But I think it works okay and it hits at all the right times that our designer needs. And in game we would actually kind of mess with how long each frame is held. So right here um, in my timeline, I have them all evenly spaced. Um, but realistically, you know, we would be holding, not this one, holding like this smears for way less. And that kind of aids in not seeing them, but feeling them a bit more. I'm not going to worry about it too much this time, but just as a test and see if, seeing if my computer can play it. Yeah. So it's a little bit better. Okay, so we have the whole thing very, very, very roughly roughed out. So one thing I added to this character that I thought would be fun is her big cape thing there. So when you're working with so few frames in 2D animation, I find that using your follow through animation is super helpful in kind of bridging the gap between your, your widely spaced frames. And it can kind of emphasize a motion that you want to make. So I'm just going to do kind of the rough shapes here. the bottom of her cape is kind of staying in the same place as she moves the part that kind of like has to move with her forward. Here, despite it being the impact, you can have it still be on its way up. So it kind of balloons out. And then here. Here it's kind of finally up and open. And in game, we have um, hit stop, which is basically where on an impact, both of the characters will freeze for a second before playing the rest of the animation. You'll see it a lot in like Street Fighter. Um, so that's one thing you have to keep in mind when you're doing your keys is that this is going to be held just for a bit longer and you're going to see it. So that's where follow through can get a little tricky because she's going to stop and you're going to see it and that's kind of it. Um, so it's just one thing you have to keep in mind in, in your animations if you have hit stop in your game. And here. Oops. 
even as she's starting to return to the idol, I want her cape to still be coming up afterwards. And here's one thing that gets tricky in games. Follow through in real life, you know, if you're, if you're wearing like a cape or your hair is long, it's going to keep continuing its motion even after your body has stopped moving. Um, and in games, in 2D animation at least, you know, if you have procedural, it's not an issue. But when you're hand animating every frame, everything has to stop at once. And there's not really any way to get around it. So you kind of have to BS the follow through a little bit. So it's gonna come back a little faster than it would normally. Okay, let's see how that looks. Photoshop's timeline is kind of a pain. If you put everything in folders, then they'll just disappear out of your other frames. Okay. So I think you can see it kind of emphasizes the impact a little bit more. Um, but it also kind of smooths the motion because it has to go so fast and then sometimes your spacing can be kind of big. So really quick, I'm going to go ahead and add her, her little side bang things because that's another thing that helps it out. And right now I'm having her hair kind of mirror. Um, a thing in animation you generally never want to do is have stuff move at exactly the same time. Like if you raise your arms, your arms don't move at exactly the same rate. But right now I'm just being lazy and I'm having the mirror. Okay, so just a small thing helps fill in the motion a little bit. And you might not have anything to follow through in your character design, and that's okay. That's when you can kind of use 
smears to your benefit. But if you do, it's super helpful. Same thing as she's starting the second motion. I have her cape still kind of continuing the motion it was making. And here, I'm going to have it kind of fall as, as she starts twisting. The cape is kind of over her arm there. Still falling, even though, you know, she's still, she's starting uh, her turn. And here, I'm going to have it finally do that big twist with her. She's almost to where she needs to be, but the cape still is catching up. And here, finally, because this is the frame that's going to be held in game, I want it up and out so it kind of looks cool, since you'll see it.
Okay. Starting to return back to idle. Same thing here. Um, it's still kind of continuing its motion up even as she starts to go back. How much time do we have left? 10 minutes? Okay. So again, it's kind of twinning. Um, but, you know, if I flesh it out more, I would probably tweak that. So it kind of works, I think. So I think that's kind of as far as I can get today. Obviously, there's a lot of work to be done. But I had finished the animation before. Not, you know, I tied it down. It's not completely done. And I had our designer, Mike, put it into Schoolgirls. So I have this. So... Again, you can kind of see how much faster it is, which is something that we just kind of have to deal with. And it's still super scribbly. Um, you know, if, if I had the time, I'd rather I spent the time, but I would tie it down a lot more so her face wouldn't go all over the place. But you can kind of see, um, you know, how it works out. And I think that's it. Uh, I guess we have a few minutes for Q and A. Does anyone have questions? Sure, right here. Uh huh. Uh huh. Right. Um. So if you're if you're canceling, sorry. Oh, okay. Um, I can go back here. So he's asking on frame 14, was it 14? I think it's about 14. Um, about when she's like transferring. Yeah, so she's, she's going from one move to another. There. Yeah, in this case, because these animations are just animated to be linked, mm -hmm. um, there's not that much of an issue. One thing our designer always likes is um, if you do cancel, you do want it closer to the key so it it reads still. Um, but in terms of like canceling one animation and just going to a different animation, it honestly happens so fast that you don't really notice it. And that's where having really strong and clear keys and kind of making your animation build around your keys helps because in the end, what you're going to be reading is just that punch or the kick. I can keep this 
this up. Any other questions? Uh huh. Can you do a head stop? Can you do a moving hold? A moving hold? Um, what would, what's that? Well, moving hold is the like rear motor on the rope. Uh huh. They have this position. So they just animate a couple of frames more like and loop them. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We do that too. Um, yeah, if it's something that's held a particularly long time, or say on like their jump animations where they they have uh, this, we have like a three frame loop of basically the same frame as she moves up, and then she'll have um, she'll continue her animation as she goes to the apex pose, and then start to descend, and then they have like one pose. I wish I had the game open or something, but yeah, they they have like one pose that we animate like, you know, their hair moving, just looping. And then we can hold that as we move the character down before she hits the ground. So, yeah, we do that a lot, too. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's, it's all hand-drawn. Um, we have a lighting system that kind of lights the edges of the characters. And you can see that, you know, even though she's, uh, you know, the rough character is just blocked in, she still has the atmospheric blue that we're painting on all the characters. But as far as like, just their, their shadows, just you know, on her skirt, on her face, that you know, the thing that's casting on Squiggly's hair, that's all hand animated and drawn in. I wish we could make a way to have it just procedural, but we don't know how. Uh-huh. Uh, uh-huh. Oh, um, second one. Okay. Um, he asked, how long do we hold the hit stops? Sorry, was that a five? Okay. <laughs> um, how long do we hold the hit stops? I don't know. <laughs> that's, that's, uh, that's up to our designer. Um, and the second one was, can I make the PSD available online? And sure. Should I put it up on the reanimator site? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll do that. It'll be there. Look at that. Look at what I just did. <laughs> okay. So we have five minutes left. Um, uh-huh. Over here. Um, how, he asked, how rough is it when we put it in game? Honestly, we would put this in game right now. Um, and we try to do it as early as possible. So, like, this... This still hits at the right time. Um, it hits in generally the right place. So I actually don't tie it down this much before putting it in, in game. We, we put them in as scribbles and then figure it out, see how it feels, um, you know, kind of get it all worked out. And then our designer gets it back to us and says, hey, I want this and this changed, or maybe this works. Maybe, you know, we need a frame out. We need another frame here. And then we tie it down, um, you know, knowing that it'll work in game. Um, but yeah, getting it in as early as possible, even if it looks like crap, as long as it works, that's what matters. And that's kind of how we get the gameplay feeling as good as it does. Uh huh. Right in front. Um, I know uh, right now you guys are working on like a more mechanical character. Uh huh. Um, he asked, so right now we're working on kind of a more mechanical character, so how do we balance the squash and stretch versus being like a robot? Do you mean Big Band? Uh, well, Big Band is still covered by a Right. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so we have this character now that's just a straight-up robot. Um, and what's actually really interesting about her is that it's kind of a test to see how much we can reuse from an existing character. We have a character that's already been done named Misfortune and actually is kind of a joke. Um, we had the idea to do just a robot version of her. So she has a lot of the same animations um, just from the original character, Misfortune. And we've been um, just giving them to our cleanup team and saying, hey, change this into the robot version, which if we, if we were probably like smarter about how we did it in the first place, like if we used Flash or something, we could just skin it differently. Um, but that's not the case for us. We actually have to redraw everything. 
so now we're tur turning this super like squishy organic character into a robot. And um, it's, it's been interesting. What we've been doing actually is redrawing frames less um, and actually just kind of like moving and transforming parts of her, um, which is something kind of like the old Sprite Capcom games did, like Sentinel. He, he's just like built in pieces and they move the pieces up and down. And that kind of, um, one, makes it a little faster to do. <laughs> and um, two, you know, just makes him look more robotic. So that's kind of what we've been doing. As far as the squash and stretch goes, we have honestly just trying, we're trying to do a little less. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if, if we can convey, you know, her being robotic without looking too stiff. Um, anything else? I think we have one over here. Mm -hmm. um, so he's, he's asking, um, like I mentioned, that Photoshop is kind of difficult to use. Um, would Flash be a better option? And I think it kind of depends on the look you want. I think Flash kind of comes with a certain look. Um, you know, it kind of, it kind of, oh, we're wrapping up. Okay. Um, yeah, Flash has a certain look to it. Uh, I know, like, Clay Entertainment uses Flash for their animations, and they still achieve um, this really awesome, like, fluid 2D style animation, but uh, their things are, their animations are essentially, like, puppet-based, so they have kind of, like, different pieces that they're moving, and they draw, um, you know, just different angles. So it kind of depends on what you're, you're doing. Um, for Skullgirls, we really wanted to emphasize just everything being hand-drawn. So that's, that's why we use, well, there's other animation programs too. Like there's Toon Boom, um, there's TV Paint, I think. And you still can 2D animate in Flash. Um, but yeah, just, just for us, honestly, because I'm just used to it, I kind of made it work for me. But... Yeah, if there's something else that, that you find works for you and can achieve the look you want, then go for it. Um, and I think we're good. Thank you all so much. That was really weird.